That's the problem. Uh, hope everybody's uh, having a blessed day. Um, more than anything, hope those that come out last night. If I'm kind of leaning to this side a little bit, I got the pork on this side, I got the hot dog on this side. <laughs> I'm still a little bit wobbly. And, and I, I have to say, of course, everybody's done their part. Uh, it was, the food was great, the fellowship was great, we enjoyed it with the weather. But I appreciate, too, uh, Jeff and Ricky bringing yes. back the memory of Christmas morning. Because, mm. uh, you know, I come over here about 2 30 yesterday afternoon and I had to leave. And then I smelt all that bologna and all that pork and everything, and I thought about it, and then I got to come back last night. I, it's just like a little boy back again waking up Christmas morning. I just pressed it was coming, right? So I hope y'all are doing well. Go over a few announcements. Uh, this morning, October 20th, we're all at the right place. I would invite you to Sunday school this morning. was really, really good. Appreciate Brother Tim. You know, um, the women's had uh, a good one as well. But, uh, we're, you know, we're talking about a lot of interesting things. that's not only happened back then in the books of Acts, but how it relates to today. Um, oh, I hope that's not me. Okay. Sorry. Gotcha. Sorry. So October 20th was uh, today, we're going to have Sunday morning, October 22nd, Tuesday, they will be the TCBA, Takes Creek Baptist Association, the annual Red House, they're meeting at the Red House Baptist Church. October 23rd, uh, we'll have Wednesday evening prayer, prayer service, 6 p.m. October 24th, Thursday, ladies night, craft night. Uh, October 26th, this is next Saturday, we will have our first Brotherhood meeting. Uh, we'll be doing, um, we're gonna, of course, we're going to eat, right? And then, uh, then we're going to have a devotion, and we're going to go over and work on the fence over the parsonage. This is all age groups, so please bring, you know, if you've got younger, older, it's an opportunity for us to be involved with each other, right? Yes. And then, then, what we do here, we take out the community and show people we love them, right? Yes. Uh, October 26th is Saturday. Kids fall into Jesus Craft Evening at 4 p.m. October 27th is, a, of course, Sunday school and uh, services throughout the day. October 30th is Wednesday business meeting and prayer. Uh, November 2nd is Saturday Lady Secret Power Reveal p.m. or 5 p.m. And then November 4th, it's Monday uh, through Wednesday. Uh, Brother Dave will be doing revival over in Urban at the Friendship Baptist Church, mm -hmm. Brother Scott's church, right? Mm -hmm. So that is November 4th and 6th. I'm sure Brother Dave would love to have our support. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can go over and uh, visit with them. December 7th is Saturday Ladies Stealing Gift Game at 5 p.m. All right. Let's go. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Oh, yes. Thank you. Since Jackie helped me, you would have both been in trouble, right? <laughs> One addition for the uh, Lady Secret Sister. I, I'm, I know a lot of you are already involved, but this is the new sign up sheet for this coming year. Yeah, this is for it. new and old. It's back there on the soundboard, but please grab one of these and fill this out if you're going to participate. I think they have a lot of fun. I know my wife. It keeps me from buying stuff from time to time, so the chief gets real happy, so please participate in that. But, so fill this out and turn it into... I bring it with you to your to that to that night. If you can't be there, give it to me and I'll, I'll draw a name for you. But basically, you're just giving us ideas, your secret sister ideas for gifts and things that you would like. You're not asking for all these things, but fill it out as completely as possible mm -hmm. because... If you put on there, I like anything. Well, that does not help me. <laughs> mm. I, I need to make a decision. So just fill it out. <coughs> help your secret sister know what kind of hobbies and things that you like, yes. so they can give you give you a, a, a gift. Perfect. All right. Thank you. And and then you know I, something's kind of been staying on my mind a little bit. I asked Pastor I had permission to do this. But you know the ladies are having this stealing the gifts thing, right? And I'm a little, it's a little je I'm a little jealous. We don't have that. So I thought, how can I participate? I'm not allowed to go, but participate. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap up maybe a fake snake or a fake spider, and I'll send that to Cindy. 
So when y'all are opening those gifts, mm. just think it may be one of those gifts that I send. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and open up with our pledges. Everybody stand, please. The Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for his kingdom stands. One brotherhood, united all mankind, in service and in love. The Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Hide his word to my heart, that I might not sin against God. American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see you out. Sure. Alright, let's start out. Does anybody have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Alright, I've got one guy. Is this a birthday or anniversary? Birthday. Um, Happy birthday. Alright, any other birthdays? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Many more. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's start out this morning on page 535. We'll get him to help us sing. <laughs>
you're going to turn back to page 229. Sunday school hour this morning. Thank you for those teachers who studied, prepared, and presented. And now we look forward to the message for the day's little brains this morning. We thank you for Anna Tina that you sent our way to uh, lead this uh, congregation, Lord. We thank you for the years we've had with them. We look forward to many more years. And Lord, we thank you for, for all that you do for us, Lord. We never thank you enough. Lord, we now that this time we just want to give back to you what you bless us with through this time and offerings. I pray that uh, through it, souls could be saved, Lord. And, uh, we can continue to do your work, Lord, here as long as you allow us to be. Lord, we love you and thank you. Your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 
Always pray for me and my family. Absolutely. I think uh, also with the upcoming election, right? He is. Uh, he's at a prayer, and mm -hmm. then it's Israel. Uh, they're facing it from all sides. They are. Just as the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Those that are struggling with mental illness right now. Yes. I think that's very good. Yeah. Yes. Shane, I, I really do want to thank people for praying for me. The next upcoming stage in this is um, uh, is radiation in a few weeks. I begin that in a few weeks. And there will be four weeks of that, Monday through Friday. Then after that, we should be done with treatments. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting through this next day. So I appreciate everybody's prayers and support. Can you lift her sister up? Anyone else? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Remind me of her name. I'm so sorry. Roberta. Roberta. I'm sorry. Absolutely. And I think um, one other, um, but they brought it up a couple times. We've got some uh, churches right here in our community that, for a lot of different reasons, don't have pastors right now. So having the, and the congregation's full and the pastors are not able to do that. So keeping them lifted up. Yes. Anyone else? Well, just me. Uh, I wanted to praise God for the healing of my two grandchildren. Amen. 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 We need to hear more of that, don't we? We got to know. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That's good. And I've got, I won't bring any names, but if you all can, we, you know, all of us came together. We've got some friends at work praying for their salvation. I'm trusting God will bring them 
I don't care what church they go to, as long as they're in the church. Mm-hmm. Serve of Jesus, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Who do you want this? Yes, um, ma'am. Our daughter, Jenny, she was one of the members that she was a part of it. She's supposed to be in tears. Absolutely. Thanks, Jenny. Anyone else? Terry. Terry, that's right. because it stays on my brain. If we have visitors, if there's anyone that's not been here, we want to welcome them, but also getting them to turn this in. Yes. In the, uh, put it in the offering plate, but making sure that we reach out to you and love on you a little bit and thank you for coming to White Pit. Yes. All right. Anyone else before we go to the Lord's Prayer? Um, Micah, here's a wife. Micah. Micah, the person. Oh, oh. Okay. His, uh, he lost his grandmother, right? Micah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. The Lord wants to pray for his mom. She's got straight. Oh. Coming from a child, right? There. That's good. Thanks, Luke. We will lift her up. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for being in your house, dear Lord, that you provided to us. Lord, we give thanks for the word that you give us. Lord, we give thanks for our pastor. And I pray blessings and protection on him and his family as he goes throughout the, the week, dear Lord, in the community. And Lord, I just pray that you hide him behind the cross, giving the word, dear Lord, that he needs and encouragement, dear Lord. I pray as a church, dear Lord, that we come together in the needs that have been lifted up, dear Lord. We pray for Israel, as we know we're facing we're facing on all sides, dear Lord. I lift up this upcoming election. I just pray that God's will will be done, dear Lord. And that if someone's not going to follow the direction of Jesus, dear Lord, that they be set down, dear Lord. So I pray your will will be done in our lives. I lift up people that are dealing with mental illness, dear Lord. You know what their needs are far better than us, but I pray that you just place them, maybe place them in our path. Give us the Holy Spirit, give us a word to give to them. Lift them up so that we can do your work. I give thanks for my sister Jackie. I pray continued blessings and healing upon her body. Confidence, dear Lord. And dear Lord, I pray for those that are caring for her and trying to help. I just pray for strength. Dear Lord, I lift up Roberta, Charlotte's sister. I pray for continued healing on her body. I give thanks for the praise reports of these grandchildren that's been healed, dear Lord. We give all thanks and glory to you. I pray for Jeannie's. Uh, Jean, Linda's, uh, I pray for their family for healing, yes, dear Lord. And I lift yes. up Terry Pingleton. I just pray, dear Lord, that you give her strength where she, you know she needs it the most. Yes. And dear Lord, I lift up Micah, who has um, suffered the loss of his grandmother. And I pray for little Luke's mother. I give thanks for a child that will raise her. Praise to you, dear Lord, and ask for the healing and the trust that that he has in you, dear Lord, and confidence in doing. I give the service to you, dear Lord. I just pray that you lift up my brother, giving the word that we need to hear. We'll give all thanks and glory to you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Anybody got any special singing today? All right. Come on up.
this morning this uh, I'll tell you <laughs> it is such a blessing to your pastor when I can stand up here and look out over the audience and everybody's smiling and blessed and you're just so eager to, to worship and to study God's word and I, I just simply love that Caitlin well, was you uh, did you want to sing this morning yeah, oh okay well brother Randy if you'll be making your way up Oh, we'll see if we can sing one. Oh Lord, help me say it. Be preaching the revival uh, next month, uh, starting the fourth, and I'm very excited about that. So you all pray God to lay the words upon my heart that He would have His people to hear. In a dream, I was there when they crucified. My dream I saw
know, Jesus did pray there in John 17, 9. He says, I prayed for them. I prayed not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And most certainly, he did pray for us. If there'll be no more singing this morning, we're going to go into two places in the New Testament. And if you're able to mark these places, I want you to put down a leaf there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, a Bible marker. Because we're going to be turning back and forth into these two books. When you find 1 Corinthians chapter 15, mark it, and then go a little bit further to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You know, I don't know why it is, but uh, most churches, we don't preach or teach on the resurrection until Easter. But you know what, friends? If there would be no resurrection, we would be without hope this morning. And I, I'm so glad uh, our Lord is alive and he lives forevermore. And because he arose from the dead, he's made it possible for each and every single one of us to have life in him. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and then we'll be going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. As uh, Brother Shane mentioned it, I also want to mention, uh, I thank God for... Uh, Brother Jeff and Brother Ricky, they did an outstanding job cooking that meat. I mean, they was over here about all day yesterday. And, and then uh, the church for bringing out a dish. Uh, we had such a wonderful time. Uh, later on that evening, we had a, a, a bonfire. Everybody gathered around and just enjoyed one another's fellowship. I had to cut it uh, short myself, but... Uh, I told Shane, I said, I don't know why we just do this once a year. We had, we just had such a wonderful time. And, you know, I thank God as, as a church family, we can do that. Uh, and, you know, as we just spend time outside of these walls, it just builds relationships. It just draws closer to one another. And, and uh, that's what I want us to be. I want us to be closer than a family, our own physical family. Uh, as I said before, yeah, it, you know, if I if I fell on hard times, I believe I could call anybody in this church, and I believe you would help me, and vice versa, of course. And that's the way God would have it to be. He wants us to love one another and to help one another along the way. So when you find your place, we're going to stand as we reference the reading of the Word of God. I want to look at 1 Corinthians first, chapter 15. And uh, I want us to look down in verse 50, and I want us to uh, take note of what the Apostle Paul has to say to us. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, and that word sleep there is in reference to death, Okay. But we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as he know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, uh, turn over with me as I trust that you've got these two places marked because we'll be turning back and forth, okay? Notice what, what he says again to the church of Thessalonica here in verse Thessalonians chapter 4, verse uh, 13. And of course, they was people, uh, false teachers and false prophets that said that the rapture had already took place and now that their loved ones that has died is without hope and so was they. Uh, friends, listen, I mean, that, that would be miserable to think 
that, that you're without hope. Mm -hmm. But notice what he says in verse 13. He says, but I, I would have you uh, not to be ignorant or to, mis to, or to be misled, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Again, that word is a reference to death. That he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Now, let me stop here and say this. The reason he says that, because uh, 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 some of these other people had lost their loved ones without making a profession of faith. Okay? Or, or was involved in some type of a, 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 a religion that was not based totally on Jesus Christ being the way, the truth, and the life. So those that, that had died without Jesus, yes, they died without hope. There's no more hope for them. Friends, listen, if you die without Jesus Christ, you mark it down. There is no more hope for you. There is no more second. There, there, there's no such thing as a second chance once you leave this life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then which also are asleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ, look at this, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort he one another with these words. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And you know, when we think about the resurrection and things pertaining to that, sometimes it is a mystery to some folks. And I hope I can shine a little light on that this morning. If you maybe are a little bit confused, uh, maybe as we look into the Word of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit, He can enlighten our hearts and minds, right? The first thing I want to bring to your attention, of course, is, is back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. The rapture will produce the resurrection, okay? So notice again what he says in verse 51. He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, we shall not all die, but when but 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 when shall but we shall all be changed. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Folks, listen, a, a twinkling of an eye is very, very quick. So what the Apostle Paul is saying right there, that they were looking for the Lord to come in their lifetime, every one of them, but the Lord did. But he says that when the Lord comes, the dead in Christ will rise first, but, but you and I are going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Why? Because again, he says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. As we said last Sunday, this flesh, folks, this flesh is sinful, it's corruptible. It cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So therefore, the change must take place. And what excites me more than anything this morning is, is, is to know that the time is at hand for the Lord to return back for the church. Now, I'm not going to be so foolish to put a date and time on that because nobody knows. But in Matthew chapter 24 with the Olivet Discourse, Jesus was foretelling and giving signs of, of, of the tribulation. And we know, folks, we know the church is not going to go through the tribulation because that is a time of Jacob's trouble, not ours. And God is going to make a way for his church not to go through that. God provided an ark in Noah's days for he and his family to be saved before judgment fell. God sent two angels down to Solomon and Gomorrah to warn Lot to get his family to get out because judgment was coming. What I'm saying is this, that the tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble will take place. So will the rapture. The rapture will usher out God's people, then judgment will come upon this earth in so much and so severe that Jesus said himself, unless I should shorten those days, 
No flesh would be saved. That's how bad it's going to be in the tribulation period. I'm saying this, that if you're lost this morning, you need to be getting right with God. Amen. Because I'm saying the rapture could take place before I'm even done with this message. Amen. I'm looking, I'm looking for the Lord Jesus. Yep. I'm looking for him. Now, when you hear that word rapture, I don't want you to be confused or even troubled. Going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when Paul made this phrase that we'll be called up together, in Latin, it means rapturo. Uh, in English, it means uh, rapture. That's where we get the word rapture from. It just simply means to be called up or to, sna to be snatched away. That's exactly what Paul is saying concerning when the Lord comes back. He's not coming back to the earth, but he's stepping out of the clouds of glory and with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. He says the dead in Christ will rise first. Now, let me say this. When, when, a, when somebody dies in the Lord, their soul and spirit goes on to be with God. They are not in bodily form. They have not received their glorified body yet. When Jesus comes back for the church, the soul and the spirit of, of those that has died in the Lord will descend back into that body. I don't care if it's went back to the dust of the earth or if it was cremated. It's going to be, it's going to be risen because as Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we were sown in corruption, but we'll be raised in incorruption. We were sown in witness, we'll be raised in power. The dead in Christ will rise first. But then he says, we which are alive and remain shall be changed. We're going to be changed in the moment, the twinkle of an eye. Folks, that's fast. Yeah. When God comes back for the church, the dead in Christ will rise. We're going to be changed. We're going to be out of here as quick as you blink your eye. Nobody's going to know what's happened until it's already gone. Don't tell me you're going to have time to get right with God when that day takes yeah. place. No, you're going to be left behind to go through the great tribulation period. You don't want that. You want to be ready. So what I'm saying this morning, I'm going to take my time and try to teach you this, okay? The rapture will produce the resurrection. The resurrection is the absolute foundation to the gospel. As we said before, if Jesus died for sinners, and if that's all he did was died if he's still in the grave, well, then, then that would have been notable. But our hope is not in that. But thank God he arose that third and glorious day. Jesus said in Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and death. Victory is only through Jesus Christ. If you want victory over death, hell, the grave, and sin, it's found in Jesus. Amen. Nowhere else. We know according to Acts chapter 9 that Saul had an experience on the Damascus road with the risen Savior. The risen Savior saved him, changed his life from Saul to Paul. And from that very moment on, he preached Jesus Christ and crucified. He talked much about the resurrection because again, without the resurrection, we have no gospel. The gospel is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. Without the resurrection, we have no hope. So why don't we preach it and teach it more often than we do? The resurrection brings comfort to you and I when we lose our loved ones when they die in the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. This is why we say it's not a final goodbye. It's just, I'll see you when I get there. Amen. That is, if you prepare your heart to go where they did. Yes. Every time we walk through a cemetery, we're always reminded. Right? Yes. And I don't know if the graves will just be laid back or if they'll just pass right through the ground. I suppose they'll pass right through the ground. Because Jesus, when he was in his glorified body, walked right through the door Amen. without even opening it. Amen. So a lot, of, a lot of people's got this notion that when the dead in Christ will rise first, the dirt will be laid to the side. I don't think so. I think, he'll just, I think we'll just pass right through if we should go by the grave. And by the way, 
If we go by the grave or go by the rapture, it's going to be fine either way because to be absent from bodies, be present with the Lord. Amen. Church, I don't know what the message is doing for you so far, but it sure is exciting me. Amen. 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 You know, again, we believe that according to the Bible scholars that Job is the oldest book in the Bible, but in chapter 19, verses 25 and 26, Job states his faith in the resurrection. He says, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter days upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see him. <laughs> Secondly, you'll notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 53 through 54. Let's read it together. He says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So in this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. And of course, Paul said there in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 27, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now, my second thought is this, that the rapture brings forth restoration. You know what that means? That means it simply means restoring something to its original state. When you and I think about Genesis chapter 2, when God made man and woman, they were perfect. Adam and Eve was perfect until they sinned against God in chapter 3. And as they rebelled and sinned against God, they caused the whole human race to be plunged into sin and to be separ separated from God. But God always had a plan. That, that, that never took God by surprise. God had a plan, and that was to send his son into this world in due time to die for our sins, that the relationship could be prepared. Jesus is the bridge to God. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So what's going to happen when the rapture takes place, when Jesus comes back to the church, is at that time, the dead in Christ will rise first. They will receive a glorified body. Then you and I, we're, we're going to be changed. Friends, that excites me. It excites me knowing that we're living in a day and time where we might not even see that. Now, you know, just like that old saying, uh, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I mean, I don't know about you. I, I mean, I don't fear death, but I don't sit around and, and wishing for to die. Amen. I'd rather go in the rapture if I had my choice. But it's all up to God. So, friends, I want you to think about it. And you young people like Lane and Kendall. Boy, ain't that a good looking couple right there. They just recently been married. Amen. 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 They just recently got married. Congratulations to you guys. But 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 you young people, you don't focus too much on that glorified body as us older ones do. <laughs> because when you get around 50, 60, 70 year old. Thing starts popping and squeaking and cracking. And... <laughs> Randy, you and Shane, I'm, I'm not going to pick on you two this morning. But you know, when you get older, you lose hair where you need it and you start springing up hair where you don't want it. I notice when I go shaving, I'm having to shave up my nose and down my ears. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, why in the world is hair growing out my ears? <laughs> Randy, I said I was going to leave you alone. I'm going to. I'm not going to say what I would like to say. We'll just, we'll just go on. But folks, listen. I mean, there's coming a day where, where we're going to receive a glorified body. We'll never grow old. We are going to be forever young in heaven. There's not going to be no more sickness nor sorrow. There's not going to be no more sin and wrestling with sin and the temptations of sin and, and the ways of this world. Friends, I'm looking forward to that. Amen. I mean, I am looking forward to that day I don't have to wrestle with sin and the temptations thereof anymore. Amen. 
You know, John said in Revelation 21, 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sickness nor sorrow, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Friends, everything that you and I experience down here won't be up there. Amen. Sometimes our hearts break when we lose a loved one, when they fall sick, when they fall ill. To be in a glorified body, no more high blood pressure, no more cholesterol. My doctor says, David, listen to me. If it tastes good, spit it out. <laughs> uh, Jeff, the only thing I can say, it's a good thing she wouldn't hear last night watching me. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, Jerry, but when it tastes as good, I don't want to spit it out. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we're going to be able to eat whatever we want in heaven. No high cholesterol, no high blood pressure. To be in a glorified body, to never have another ache or pain. Friends, you know, I, I mean, I thank God for the hope that we have. Yes. Romans 8, 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. There ain't going to be no hospitals in heaven. There ain't going to be no nursing homes in heaven. There ain't going to be no places where you go to boot camp and get ready to, to fight wars in heaven. There ain't going to be none of that. You know, uh, I'm an old mountain man. I love the mountains. I love going up on the highest peak and uh, looking over God's creation, the pretty mountains, the trees, and all of that. Some of you women, like my wife, you love the ocean. But in heaven, folks, our minds cannot even begin to comprehend how beautiful that place is going to be. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Friends, listen, I hope you don't miss heaven. I know I'm not going to. Not because of what I've done, because of what he did, my faith and trust in him and him alone. Amen. Bible says in 1 John 3, 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You say, Brother David, will we know our loved ones in heaven? Absolutely. You, you know what's so embarrassing uh, uh, for me is that I'm so bad remembering names. People say, well, Brother David, you're so good memorizing scriptures. I wish I was like that remembering names. The fact of the matter is, I'm all the time having to say, huh, now who is this and who is the heck they know I? Sometimes I think my memory is, well, not like it used to be, that's for sure. But, but in heaven, we're going to have a perfect mind. We're going to know those, we're going to know our loved ones that we've never laid eyes on. You know, my uncle Earl, he was killed in the Korean War at the tender age of 19 year old. I never met him. But when I get to heaven, I'll know who he is. We're going to be in that glorified, perfect body. You know, the half has not even been told to us. Time's getting away from me. Let me move on. There's just so much to say. And then thirdly, in 1 Thessalonians, flip on over there at 417. Flip on over to, to, to 1 Thessalonians very quickly. Look what he says in verse 17. He says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and there shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. So, you know, when, when, we, when we teach on the resurrection, you, you really must combine both of these books together to really see the, the broader scope of what Paul is saying about the resurrection. Folks, listen. Down here, we, we, we talk often about family reunions. Some families get together once a year and some don't. But, we, you know, most families look forward to this to see loved ones that they haven't seen in a long time. And then it's always sad when we part, knowing that we're going our separate ways and we might not, might not have another chance to, to see them again, right? But, but listen to me, church. There is coming a, a great reunion day where we're all going to be together 
through all eternity. <clears throat> Paul says the dead in Christ will rise first, then we which are alive and reign shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air, and there shall we ever be with the Lord. So listen, we've all got loved ones that has died in the Lord. We know that they're in heaven waiting on us, right? I mean, I, I've got a dear, wonderful, sweet daddy in heaven that I want to see again. I've got my grandparents in heaven that I want to see again. I don't know about my Uncle Earl. I like to think he's in heaven. I, I can't imagine going out on the battlefield where bullets is zooming over your head and not get right with God knowing that you're just a step away from death. I, I would say many of the soldiers been saved out there on the battlefield because they called upon the name of Jesus and said, Lord, save me. Not only physically, but save my soul. I've got friends in heaven. But, but can I say this? I won't do this justice without saying this. There's a song that says, Will the family circle be unbroken? I also have family that's died without ever making a profession of faith. I, I like to think that in their last moments they called upon Jesus, but I don't know. You see, I don't know. I've conducted many eulogies over people that never made a profession of faith. To sit and to watch the family look at me and say, preacher, can you give me some comfort knowing that my loved one is in heaven? Folks, listen to me. Listen very good. Not everybody dies, goes to heaven. I, I, I've seen people make such foolish comments on Facebook. Well, so-and-so earned their wings. There is no such thing as somebody earning your wings. For by grace are he saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. Amen. You might have somebody that has lived such a wonderful, good, moral life, and I commend that. But you're not going to heaven because you lived a good, moral life Amen. and that you help people along the way. Amen. That's commendable, but, but that won't get you into heaven. Right. So many people nowadays is so misled. They don't read their Bibles. They don't go to church, but they'll be quick to tell you, this is what I think. Well, you need to know what, what the Bible says about you. Yes. You need to know what the Bible says about it. Feelings can be misleading. There is coming a great reunion day. You know, the Bible says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 and on, the Bible gives us an account of a man that died and in hell lifted up his eyes, being in torments. He cried out to Father Abraham, and when he when he seen and understood that there was no coming out of the belly of hell, in verse 27, he says, I pray thee therefore that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, lest they come to this place of torment. Abraham says, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. He says, nay, Father Abraham, but if one arose from the dead and, and, and went unto them, they will repent. He says, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. You see, look, he knew the message of repentance. He neglected it. The Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, and also verse 5, I tell you, nay, except they repent, they shall all likewise perish. Yes. You know, what's going to make heaven so wonderful. It's not going to see Main Street pure gold. John says Main Street in heaven is pure gold. The gates, the 12 gates that's hung with pearl, the beautiful scenery in heaven, being reunited with family and friends that died in the Lord, that's not really going to make heaven for me. 
send Jesus. The one that made it possible. The one that made it possible. To see the nail scar hands, the nail scars in his hands and feet, and in his side, the, the prince of that uh, 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 crown of thorns on his forehead. We are going to be reminded through all eternity just how we got to heaven by his scars. Amen. And just to fall down at his feet and worship him. Friends, that's what's going to make heaven. Yes. That's what's going to make heaven. Amen. We sang about him through faith. But one of these days, as we sing and worship him, we're going to see him face to face. As the Bible says in Revelation chapter 4, verses 10, the four, the four and 20 elders fell down and cast their crowns at the feet of Jesus, and they began to worship him, right? So the rapture will reunite past and present believers together, as Paul says in verse Thessalonians chapter 4. The rapture will precede the judgment seat of Christ. It's right after the rapture that we're called up and at some point, and at some point, the believers will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we may receive the things done in our body, whether that would be good or bad. Now listen, the judgment seat was not going to determine whether you're going to heaven or hell. That's already been determined the very moment you said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, come into my heart, save my soul. The judgment seat will consist of you receiving rewards or losing rewards. And maybe the next position you and I might have in the next life. That's what the judgment seat is all about. You know, when I got to thinking, it's just like what Jesus said, Matthew 6, verses 19 through 21, lay your treasures up in heaven, for neither moss nor rust doeth corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. You know, by simply being obedient and doing God's will, you are investing in, in the kingdom of God. You are laying up treasures in the kingdom of God. When we do good deeds to one another without drawing attention to ourselves and doing it with the right motives, you're laying up treasures in heaven. And, and you know, I would rather do that than lay them up down here because everything you and I lay up down here is going to perish. Yes. They're temporal. You're not going to be able to take nothing with you. The most wisest thing, I believe, is to lay them up in heaven. So when you get to heaven, you can enjoy those through all eternity. Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 4, when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that they did not away. Again, Jesus said in Revelation 22, 12, Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Last but not least, I would like to go more in depth with this, but again, time's getting away from me. The rapture will remove us from this temporal into our eternal destination. Friends, again, as you and I think about this, everything in this life is temporal. I mean, we're, we're, we're all passing through very quickly. Everything we have is quickly fading away also. Everything is temporal in this life. But the life to come is eternal. John said in Revelation 21.1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. There was no more seen. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God as a bride adorned for her husband. And then, as I had quoted verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, there shall be no more death, neither sickness, nor sorrow, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. He that sat upon the throne says, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. You know, even Daniel talked about a resurrection in chapter 12, verse 2. Notice what Daniel said. He says, and, and, and many of them that sleep, again, reference to death, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Seems to be that he's talked about two different types of resurrection. He's right on. Listen, there's going to be a resurrection for God's people but there's also going to be a resurrection for those that has died lost without Jesus. 
Turn to the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation chapter 20 very quickly. A lot of times people think that hell is the final destination. It's not. Folks, it's not. And, and as we think about hell, as Jesus described it there in the four Gospels, it's an absolute horrifying place to be, but it is not the final destination. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 20, verses 11. And I, I want you to note what the Bible had to say about this type of a resurrection that's soon coming. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose the face of the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no more place for them. There's no such thing as a hiding place in that day and time. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Notice this. And the sea gave up their dead, which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I sure hate to, to leave this message on a negative note like that. But friends, listen. It's the absolute truth. If you die without Jesus Christ, you'll end up in hell. And in one day, one day God, at God's appointed time, you're going to be delivered up. You're not going to be given a second chance at that day. You're going to be judged by everything you did, every thought you entertained, every time you rejected the Son of God. You're going to be judged. Then you'll be cast into a lake of fire. But friends, listen. As we had talked about hope, there's hope. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to fall into the hands of an angry God. You can come and fall into the hands of a merciful God and say, Lord, be merciful to me this morning. Save my soul. I trust you right now as my Lord and Savior. Friends, that's the only hope that you have. I want you to stand to your feet. As they come and get us on. Listen, as the redeemed of God, we can rejoice that we have victory once again over death, hell, and the grave. We have victory over sin because of what Jesus did for us and our faith and trust in him. When we make a true, genuine profession of faith, God saves us. And he delivers us from the power of sin. That's our hope. Our hope is that the Lord's coming back one day to receive us unto himself. Friends, listen. If you're here this morning, if you're lost, I plead with you to come and surrender all. No more playing church with God. No more playing around with God. I mean, this is as serious as a heart attack this morning. You come and you surrender all to Jesus. If you're here this morning, you say, well, Brother Dave, I don't really know. I just don't have that blessed assurance that I'm going to heaven when I die. Come. Jesus says, search the scriptures for in them he think he have life. Jesus will make you sure. If there's any doubt in your mind, friends, we're talking about eternity. Yep. There's no such thing as keeping your fingers crossed or hoping you're going to heaven. You need to know. You need to come and do business with God and forever settle it. Okay? What page? Page 465. Page 465. Give